So, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town is a Frank Capra film that came out in 1939 and was remade into a modern Adam Sandler movie in 2002 by Stephen Brill. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town begins with the sudden death of wealthy playboy Semple in the 1930s. The newspapers and lawyers begin a frantic search for the heir to his fortune of $20 million, as he had no children. The heir, a simple small-town man named Longfellow Deeds from Mandrake Falls, Vermont, is found. The lawyers of the Semple estate, led by Mr. Cedar, rush to bring him to New York to keep the newspapers away from him and to manipulate him into granting them power of attorney. When Mr. Deeds arrives in New York City, he finds people constantly attempting to weasel something out of him or use him for their ends. This sets up the central conflict of Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, which is the friction between the cynical and manipulative nature of everyone he meets in the city and the wholesome and good-hearted nature of Mr. Deeds. Gary Cooper plays Longfellow Deeds as a somewhat simple-minded fellow who doesn't see things the same way as everyone else. Everyone takes him to be a naive yokel when he is more emotionally stable and much more sensible than most people around him. When others try to poke fun at him or trick him into something, he always surprises them with his responses, usually by not putting up with their shenanigans. It is always fun to see him utterly trounce the attempts of knavery by the city folks, such as when he is made chairman of the opera company but refuses to make up for the 180000 loss they had that year. The romantic side plot is well conceived, and Jane Arthur does a fair job playing her role as the sneaky reporter who goes undercover to write articles goofing on him. The story here shows how people that find themselves as modern sleazy people can get a wake-up call from someone truly genuine and change their life for the better. I'll talk about this dynamic more later, as it factors into the Adam Sandler movie in a more critical way that explores the relationship much more than Mr. Deeds Goes to Town does. Mr. Deeds begins with the eccentric owner of a media empire, Preston Blake, freezing to death at the top of Mount Everest, leaving the heir to his stock, which is valued at $40 billion, unknown. Much like Mr. Deeds goes to town, the newspapers are looking to find out who the heir is as quickly as possible, and the selfish Mr. Cedar is looking to convince the heir to sell his stock in Blake Media for $40 billion. When they discover that Longfellow Deeds is the heir, they fly out to Mandrake Falls, New Hampshire, to bring him back to New York. Adam Sandler plays Deeds as less of a simple man than Gary Cooper. He doesn't seem to be curiously mentioning the city people's strange behavior, but just aware of it. Deeds' character in this movie has an entirely different set of priorities than the New Yorkers just looking to make money. His mindset is the polar opposite of those in the city, but he doesn't question it. The Gary Cooper Mr. Deeds wondered why people seemed to get so much enjoyment out of hurting each other. What puzzles me is why people seem to get so much pleasure out of, out of hurting each other. But the Adam Sandler Mr. Deeds shows that he believes people need to have integrity and honesty or nobody will want to work with them. You can do anything you want, but I suggest you change your attitude or nobody's going to want to work with you. When he arrives in the city, he is instantly friendly to everyone he meets, giving them hugs and being their friend. His nature quickly allies with anyone with a heart, but annoys the villainous Cedar. Mr. Deeds has Chuck Cedar as the main villain and Mac McGrath of Inside Access as the side villain, whereas Mr. Deeds Goes to Town has Cedar as the main villain and the seedy relatives of Semple as the side villains. This is interesting because even though they changed the movie's plot for the remake, they kept it the same by having Cedar team up with the other nasty person against Deeds in the third act after previously butting heads with them. Except in the 1939 movie, they claim he is insane. But in the 2002 movie, they demoralized him by telling him he really was being manipulated by everyone. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town focuses less on the relationship between Deeds and Babe than the newer movie does. The Frank Capra film is mostly about Deeds grappling with how to use the fortune for good and dealing with the mean people in the city. Gene Arthur's character is important throughout the movie, but is most important to Deeds' final decision-making. In Mr. Deeds, Winona Ryder plays Babe Bennett. Her character is important because of her decisions. Babe being a second protagonist is the coolest thing about the modern adaptation. According to the archetypes of heroes in the Hero's Journey studies, Longfellow Deeds, played by Adam Sandler, 
is known as a catalyst hero, meaning he is the main character, but since the hero is generally the character that undergoes the most growth and development, a secondary character could be described as the hero of the story. Babe was changed to be more of a character in Mr. Deeds because her character grew much more than Deeds' did. Gene Arthur's character changed more than Gary Cooper's too, but the omnipresent focus was on Longfellow's character, which did have more change in 1939 than it did in 2002. The makers of the modern adaptation realized that Deeds' character growth was extremely superficial compared to what happened to Babe, so they decided to make Deeds a fully formed character that acts as a catalyst hero, and that was a good choice. The character arcs flow so much better in Mr. Deeds because of the dynamic shift, and I especially like how Babe deliberately set out to play a damsel in distress to earn his trust. In Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, she gets a lucky break and pretends to need help despite not knowing anything about Deeds' fancies regarding marrying someone. I also find it interesting how the most crucial moment for Gary Cooper Deeds is when Babe says she loves him, but when Babe in 2002 Mr. Deeds repeatedly says she loves him, he says, I don't even know who you are, which ends up being an important message that she takes to heart. Oh, um, also Mr. Deeds uses competent industry standard cinematic editing. The movie uses wipes and other transitions for consistent elliptical editing. So, yeah. The comedy in both movies is enjoyable. The new movie made me laugh more when I first watched it, but it has PG-13 language and content, which I find objectionable. I think the inappropriate content and swearing, coupled with that stupid frostbite foot, which is not funny in the slightest and is made of pure nightmare fuel, made the humor wear down for me and lose its appeal. That being said, Mr. Deeds still has some hilarious scenes. Adam Sandler plays a pretty funny character. Mr. Deeds goes to town obviously has a very different approach to comedy than the Adam Sandler movie, and I appreciate its wholesome humor. It's funny because of hubristic people getting their comeuppance, and Longfellow was a comic character. Each film is both emotional and comedic, and they handle each aspect differently. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town is set during the Great Depression, which is important in the plot because Deeds is trying to figure out how to use his fortune wisely. If you want to watch a movie showing the impact of the Great Depression, this one wouldn't be my first pick, but that's probably because it only partially factors into the third act, which is really about the sanity hearing of Longfellow Deeds. However, this movie would be my second or third pick because it was made during the Great Depression, and the actor playing someone affected by it puts in a lot of effort to portray it as best he can, even though he is only on screen for a few minutes. Overall, I recommend the 1939 Frank Copper movie more simply because of its lack of random junk that detracts from the narrative. It might be more boring throughout its sizable runtime, but it is much more rewatchable. I could easily watch Mr. Deeds Goes to Town every year or so, but everything in Mr. Deeds, except for Babe Bennett's character arc, is getting staler for me each time I put it on. However, Winona Ryder's performance, the writing of Babe's character, and the funny scenes make this movie worth watching at least once, given that the language and content don't make it unwatchable for you. But VidAngel is always an option. I like both movies, but not really for the same reasons. The end.